to me, James Wiseman is right on schedule. Almost no college, no summer league, no preseason, throwing right into the fire. The number two pick in the draft, James Wiseman, Golden State Warriors starting center. Uh, 11 points a game, six rebounds, troubling stat, nine assists and 23 turnovers. We can get into that. Um, rebounded last night, had 20 points and four assists. So he was five he was five assists and 23 turnovers. I've seen some people a little disappointed in Wiseman early on. Certainly there have been calls uh, from the Twitter coach Arati to for Steve Kerr to change his starting five, not take out Wiseman, but take out one of the wings probably. Um, I have to say, to me, James Wiseman is right on schedule. Like, mm-hmm. I, I've, and we can talk about why and how on both ends of the floor. I see nothing. He's shooting 50% from the floor, 40% on three. Now that's only on 15 attempts. He's 6 of 15. Um, you know, 62% at the line I think is a little troubling. Certainly the Warriors have noticed that and said, ooh, we need to get that a little better. But I don't eat defenses. We can talk about it. But I, I think James Wiseman is right on schedule. And if you redrafted today... I, look, redrafting today is stupid. It's been 15 games. Like, talk to me in a year. But I think Wiseman and Ball in some order probably go one and two. I'm bullish on James Wiseman after 15 games. What have you seen that has surprised you either direction, good or bad? Yeah, he's been ahead of schedule by what I expected. Um, you know, I just thought that such a long layoff, uh, such a short college career, obviously, and then somebody who in the past has had his struggles with reading the game quickly, which is still something that he needs to improve greatly. Um, But just the fact that he's been able to come in and and play 20 minutes a game on that caliber of a team, like I underestimated just how lethal like his physical tools are, like just how he's in a class of his own. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. and, And just how impactful that is as a lob catcher, as a rim protector, as a rim runner, when he is in in position um, and when he is playing like revved up, like we've seen. Uh, So he's been much better than I anticipated, to be honest. And, you know, with James, the the thought was always, and the Memphis coaches would would tell you this, they would always say, if he goes to Golden State, he's going to be awesome. If he goes somewhere else where the culture is not great, um, he doesn't have great vets around him, then he's really going to struggle. And, and you've seen the moments where he's down on himself, right? And, and he's hanging his head and he's frustrated and he's fouling like crazy. And when you have Draymond Green to kind of pull you to the side and, and talk through some of those things in games and practices, whatever, hopefully he's not just doing that when he's mic'd up, but uh, he has <laughs> that to lean on, right? And, and so if he were in a different situation, I think we would probably see a lot more of the, you know, catch in the mid post, hold, fall away jumpers, um, and, and the lack of rebounding and, and you know, the, the lack of motor at times, I think that would be a little bit more apparent than it is in Golden State. And, and the reality is, like, if they're going to put two on the ball with Steph Curry um, and then you have him as a diver, I mean, he had seven dunks against the Spurs. You know, you look at his line and it's like 20 points. He had this monstrous game. And then you watch the film and it's like open lob, open lob, open dunk, drop off for a dunk. Um, so he's in an ideal situation. And, you know, I definitely undersold um, just the value of his physical tools, length, and agility. So the interesting thing about Wiseman, you talk about Draymond, it's very clear even from their public comments, the Warriors culture bearers, Steph, Draymond, and Steve Kerr, are going out of their way to talk about how they are putting their arms around James Wiseman, how he's, and, and you hear their, their um, TV announcers who are basically part of the team, no, he's going to be the starting center for the next 10 years, the blah, blah, blah. And it's a sign of a healthy organizational culture. It's a sign that Steph and Draymond are thinking beyond their time, even in Golden State. Now, they're also thinking if we want to win the title at any point again, we're probably going to need this dude to get good fast. But they have the long view in mind with him. And that's really interesting. And it's, it's awesome that they're saying that. And I, I think right now, absolutely, the plan is for James Wiseman to be a warrior for life. I do think the Warriors are going to have to ask themselves, as they see Clay rehab from the second devastating injury in two years, are we a title contender next year with Steph, Draymond, Clay Thompson, James Wiseman, and this supporting cast? It's a hard question. I think it's too early to answer that question. I think their early returns are frankly kind of encouraging in that regard, but it is an interesting long-term question. But yeah, they clearly care about this guy. And to me, 
what's been most the way he's struggled has been very rookie hmm. rookie e the exactly the ways you'd expect for a rookie like he has these defensive sequences where you can tell he's like holy these dudes are good <laughs> like right. these dudes, like dennis schroeder hit a step back three against him where he actually did okay and switched and and like kind of contested it and dennis just nailed it in his face and you could see wiseman being like whoa these nba got jamal murray caught him with a hesitation dribble and and you could just see again like he's digesting all right these guards are really really freaking good and but if you look at him defense what, what have you seen from him defensively so far yeah, I think in pick and roll is is where he's struggled a little bit. Um, you know, he has the ability when, uh, you know, the game slows down for him and he's feeling good about himself on, on both ends. Like, I think he's a real factor just because of how much ground he covers. Um, but, you know, he's fouling a ton. Um, that's been an issue for him in the past. Six, six, six fouls per 36 minutes. Yeah, not great. And, and so that's obviously an area where he's going to have to clean things up. Um, you know, he... He can step out a little bit, um, but I think he's had a little bit more trouble there than, than I expected. And then at the rim, if he sees it right in front of him, right? If like Draymond steps over to help and kind of is in position, then he can just kind of load from the weak side and like volleyball spike it off the glass. That's when you see his rim protection the most, I think. Um, but when it's like really quick or when he's in these drops and he's got to play that cat and mouse game and like bluff and recover and those little things, I think is, is where he's still learning. Um, I'm just interested to see like what is he going to be become right because he has all these little encouraging things like like the shooting is is, is he going to be like a hard diver and a pop guy is he going to be like then we see the ball handling in, in certain situations okay is he going to be a guy who can like is it actually pushing in transition or is it just like faking a DHO here and there and then getting downhill to finish. And then the passing, he finally had a, a pretty nice read yesterday against the Spurs on a backdoor pass. I think he finished with, with four assists. Okay, is that gonna evolve? Because by my view, you look at the best bigs in the NBA, right? You have your run and jump guys, you know, your, um, you know, Capella, Jared Allen, Mitchell Robinson, these type of guys, but then the best bigs in the NBA can kind of create their own and, and facilitate, right? Whether it's Jokic, AD, Giannis, Carl Town. Yeah, and be whatever. Um, so is he going to become like some just super elite DeAndre Jordan? Like for them, is that what he's going to be who can move better and has some, a little more skill? Or is he going to be one of those type of guys? Like that's what I'm interested to see as he continues to progress. James Wiseman is in a very unique position where he got drafted by a team that when it's healthy, thinks it can contend for the title. So when Steph's on the floor with you, your role is going to be one thing. When Steph is off the floor, your role might turn into more like that facilitator creator role. But it is interesting with these big men, sort of which direction they get nudged into. And I think right now the answer, like I'm sure I know the Warriors have ambitions for him that are bigger than good DeAndre Jordan. Okay, yeah. like like they, I think shooting threes is going to be part of his game. Working off the dribble is going to be part of his game. And defensively, you're right that he's had for sure moments and stretches of confusion and struggle. But again, to me, they are happening in ways that are exactly how you would expect them to happen. They are not alarming to me at all. In fact, I see just as many possessions where he gets low in a stance against the pick and roll and mm -hmm. effectively guards two guys at once, deters the ball handler, doesn't lose track of the roller behind him, Where he and he's had some closeouts on shooting bigs where he gets back to them and keeps on balance. They can't blow by him off the dribble. Now he's also had like, he was super late getting back to Miles Turner a couple times when he, he should have been much earlier. That's personnel, that's feeling it all out. Those are the mistakes that's gonna happen. He's definitely let some offensive rebounds go because he chases blocks that he has no chance to get, which you know a lot of big men who are sort of empty calories guys do that. That's a, again, he he's used to getting everything he wants and he's gonna realize like this league is a little faster and more skilled. But all of those things are exactly on schedule for a rookie big man who, like you said, almost no college, no summer league, no preseason, thrown right into the fire. He's got Draymond yelling at him all the time. He's got it's it's not easy. I think he's been really bullish.